that's a good thing. I would like also to say that that's a problem for the great one, the pleasure of being here and for the wonderful and overwhelming hospitality. And um, I will continue with one of the subjects that Philip uh, started. And I would like to bring to your attention the very significant and yet very existing fact of monetary policy and any single of the individuals that have been associated with my talk with the only presence of monetary policy. So, I think it's some technical problems between the two. So, despite its essential influence on daily affairs, the monetary policy remains to a large extent outside the sphere of public development. And this unhappy omission uh, can certainly be explained, at least to some extent, by the very technicality of the subject. Which I can uh, assure you can indeed propose uh, even twenty minutes. However, uh, such an obstacle would have been overcome if there was a uh, genuine awareness uh, of the overwhelming social impact of uh, monetary uh, management by governments. It is therefore crucial, first, I believe, to understand the very nature of monetary policy and especially in relation to other forms of government uh, interventions. And second, on the ground of this insight, conclusions will be derived as the consequences of this specific policy, which uh, I hope uh, will demonstrate its genuine omnipresence in our lives. So, uh, please allow me first to start with some general remarks about the government interference with the free market, uh, with which we are certainly acquainted. But I believe they are important in order to be able to fully assess. Uh, what really monetary policy is. So all government policies consist in altering the outcome of the free market, and this interference with the intentional actions of uh, legitimate property owners can basically take three forms: accession, regulation, and monopoly protection. Now, accession means the outright expropriation of the producers, a part or the whole of their wealth and income. It is the most difficult form. Uh, redistribution that separates individuals into two distinct classes, namely that one of the exploited well producers and that other one of the exploited well consumers. And following the intellectual tradition offered by uh, the French classical liberals, the libertarians today identify uh, the exploited well consumers uh, with the constituent members of the state. The second uh, form of state interference with the market in the regulation does not really imply outside expropriation. Rather, for various means, it aims to modify the actions undertaken by part of the wealth producers or by all. For example, the price manipulations for the imposition of maximum prices on consumer goods are meant to enhance the availability of the commodities for the less wealthy consumers. Regulation can also take the form of direct quantitative and qualitative restrictions on production and exchanges. When, for example, quotas and licenses are being imposed, together with limitations on contractual intercourse with specific groups of individuals, for instance, foreigners, physically enabled, but more conservative, more representatives of specific race and of gender. And classical economists have demonstrated that regulations fail to achieve their community goals. The point ground privileges for some at the expense of others. The regulation is therefore uh, interestingly redistributed, and the more public complex the system is, the more difficult it is to distinguish the exploiters from the exploited. Now, the distinction between these two classes is further by permanent concession of the state that is monopoly production in some key areas. By establishing itself as a single territorial producer of essential useful services, the state aims at persuading the citizens of the utility of its own existence. Thus, it acquires legitimacy and is part of the class of corporate, lower social consciousness, 
for this one. Therefore, resistance to increase extension and gender invention, that is to the other forms of state interference, is reduced, and the expansion of the state at the expense of voluntary cooperation and division of labor uh, is thereby facilitated. Now, what I want to show you in you know, the very nature of monetary policy is that monetary policy actually uh, puts together all these uh, features of complementary forms of uh, interference in the market. And thereby, it is, uh, I would think, uh, the most perfect form of uh, governmental interference in our lives. Uh, so, let me first start with the working definition of uh, monetary policy. Uh, it refers to the set of actions that the central bank holds in order to influence the total supply of medium exchange in a given economic area. Now, we do not need here to undertake a technical discussion of the goals and targets uh, that the uh, central bank will follow with the particular instruments that will be implemented on a daily basis in order to achieve these targets. The economically meaningful aspect of monetary policy is that it offers the total quantity of media exchange in the economy as well as short term interest rates on the capital market. On the outside of things, it appears that this policy pertains to the category of non monetary production. And the aid, in any given economic area, the central bank has the monopoly of producing the scriptural form of the domestic currency, that is, bankrupts. The central bank is also in charge of regulating, supervising, and more importantly, refinancing the banking sector, that in fact produces the fiduciary form of money. That is deposits. And these deposits are being created by banks only because they have the privilege to operate on a fractional reserve bank uh, basis and thereby to create bank credit that does not represent previous savings. At the top of this two tier banking system, the central bank alone determines the total quantity of media change in the economy. But then, monetary policy terms are also to be on instance of regulation. This is even more so as it sets the short term interest rate on the digital bank market for liquidities. Now, the manipulation of this interest rate, which can be considered as an example of price manipulation, may affect long term investment decisions. On the free market, the interest rate will raise the supply of and the demand for present goods, present future goods, in such a way that the structure of production corresponds to the pattern of consumption today and in the future chosen by individuals. A manipulation of the short-term interest rate, which also implies a change in the total quantity of money, may induce production decisions that will be dissociated from <coughs> consumption uh, decisions by individuals, by dissociated from the consumption facts. And here again, we have a confirmation of the classical findings they say that were actually by business, brought up in the author of the economics, the price controls in the monetary sphere are counterproductive and generated on both sides. Last point that needs to be emphasized in order to fully um, circumscribe the nature of monetary policy is to establish to what extent it can be considered also as a form of taxation. But the production of paper money and the fraction of its fiduciary measure. Change is substantially different from the production of commodity money, such as gold or silver coins, and fully covered many substitutes, such as deposits backed by 100 percent reserves. On the one hand, any increase in the quantity of commodity money requires recourse to additional physical resources, and the very cost of this operation imposed on gold and silver miners by the competition of other productive sectors, limits naturally the quality of money in the economy. Quite the contrary, the production of paper money is not subject to this limitation and can go on indefinitely at virtually no cost. The crucial point is that the quantity of paper money is increased without accomplishing any production oriented action, while the standing of the new money allows the money producer to gain control 
tools and services. On the other hand, many additional reports that are not covered by corresponding bank reserves represent more fiduciary behavior of change that banks are able to create and then lend out on the people that have the privilege to operate on the national reserves. And permanent increase in the fiduciary behavior of change allows, therefore, the issuer to produce more goods and services than otherwise without engaging in any previous production activity. The rising web supply in the economy appears, therefore, as a clear form of taxation, which allows the banking system as a whole, which is the monopolist producer of money, to seize part of the output of the wealth producers. And in all our firms, he who produces his own paper money is consumed without producing, and receives the output of the economy from the genuine producers. In short, what the policy turns out to be the most accomplished and complex form of state interference in the market economy, which combines all information features. Now, provided that a higher money supply allows the money producer to seize part of the output of the economy, one would naturally expect the money supply to constantly grow all the time. And this is exactly what the historical evidence shows. Now, here you can admire the dollar money supply since 1959. Uh, the, the euro record uh, is substantially identical, even worse. Um, since 1980, uh, the, the, the euro money supply has been increasing by 7.7% per year. And since we are a third, and for the sake of the third example, um, Turkish money supply has been increasing since 1986 by 59% per year. Now, a particular interest of this most visible is the most visible impact of this continuous growth of the money supply that you can expect if governments manage money production is the continuous rise in the amount of measure that it is the erosion of the purchasing power of each single monetary unit. Now, the less scarce money becomes, which is the case that we observe relative to other goods and services, the less goods and services each monetary unit will be able to purchase. These changes in the purchasing power of money are closely related, therefore, to its overall quantity, even though that thing is not automatic, neither is it. Since any additional quantity of money is used to make changes to acquire commodities, its progressive spending on the various goods. Because it expresses an additional amount, brings about a progressive rise in gold prices. This is to say that as the new money changes hands and circulates throughout the economy, its purchasing power in terms of the different gold supplies decreases progressively. Now, historical evidence here that relates the quantity of money in the economy to estimates of the purchasing power of money is also very bad. The US dollar has lost 86% since 1959. Its purchasing power, which means basically that today one dollar is buying only 40% of what it was able to buy in 1959. We have something very similar to the euro. One euro today is able to buy only 65% of what it was able to buy back in 1990. And in the case of Turkey, uh, I was on the day on until 1995, more than the time when the Turkish has already lost 99% of its purchasing power for the last 10 years. Uh, Marker reports, therefore, creates uh, an inflationary environment that, beyond destroying the services rendered by each monetary unit, completely modifies individual incentives and undermines social cooperation. It favors indebtedness and spending at the expense of thriftiness and debt. It is indeed the proper interest of each actor to contract that for at least two reasons. First, to the extent that the loan has been granted as a bank credit, this is the proper means to be the initial recipient of the new media of exchange created and to spend them before their full inflationary impact has taken place. Second, to the extent that future inflation goes beyond expectations, 
the real cost of that is low, provided also that the real yield of savings is diminished, the incentive to accumulate is important to win. The most historical level shows is a veritable explosion of that. Now, this is the total stock of that in the United States, which I take as an example. Now, in this environment, also, individuals will tend to take credits, especially in order to acquire durable goods in the form of real and financial assets, the prices of which are expected to go up in the future, and thus to protect them against the erosion of money's purchasing power. This right also substantially responds to the auto mortgages that is best taken by Americans in order to purchase uh, houses in the US. And so soon as it was put the purpose of purchasing or anything, the, the government produces money. Now, this behavior implies that the prices of durable goods will increase more than that of consumption goods. And, uh, if the golden rates are used more to buy verbal goods uh, uh, in order to protect the erosion of purchasing power. And that's also something that uh, you know, historical evidence confirms. Uh, you can see here you know, that uh, the purchasing power of the US dollar in terms of houses was increasing more than in terms of consumer goods. Uh, even though this is not very pronounced in the, in the dollar case, but in the euro case, since 1999, um, uh, the, the euro uh, purchasing power, when estimated in terms of real estate property, actually, uh, uh, the euro implies more uh, than when it is estimated in terms of consumer goods. <laughs> Which means basically that with one euro today, you can buy only 0 0.45% roughly of what you were able to buy in terms of real estate uh, property back in 1990. Mm -hmm. Now, overall, such an inflationary environment leads to a systematic decrease in the real value of any offer that has been stipulated in nominal monetary terms. But receivers of fixed incomes, such as pensioners and wage earners, are being spoliated by the beneficiaries of the new monetary units, that is, by the beneficiaries of the additional debt. And among the latter, uh, acceding property owners and businessmen uh, are uh, an easily identified group. And thus, monetary policy objectively creates a uh, social conflict uh, between proletarian bourgeoisie uh, that Marxists have only identified with uh, functioning in the free markets. And this conflict is further exacerbated by additional actions taken by wage earners to shelter themselves against inflation and by long entrepreneurial beliefs. On one hand, wage earners take collective actions in order to obtain regular indexation, that is, regular increases of their nominal salaries. Trade unions obtain various privileges from governments that all encroach upon the freedom of association and increase the cost of labor for business. On the other hand, Business profits appear artificially higher in this inflationary environment since revenues depend on current prices, while, while investment costs are calculated on a historical basis. Economic calculation then loses its accuracy and establishes conditions that actually favor capital consumption. Monetary policy is therefore fundamentally anti social, for it disturbs the very foundations of civilization. Capital accumulation, rational calculus, and invented anthropology. Since the best strategy for the property owners, who build is to satisfy the preferences of the long routing rates rather than those of the consumers, the economic structure is inevitably reshaped according to the wishes of the monopolist as a user of money. Now, the network of dependencies that uh, thus emerges. Better businessmen dependent on banks and banks dependent on their refinancing from the central bank. So, this network of dependencies, I believe, is a perfect illustration of the voluntary servitude by which the policy described tyrannical governments. Mm -hmm. By accepting and using uh, fear paid money and the fiduciary media of exchange that are available, I believe, 
we actually submit ourselves to an ongoing government that de facto directs all sectors of economic activity. And the first step towards the liberation from this technologically perfected and a complete form of intrusion in our lives uh, would be to attend the understanding of one of the policy's nature, uh, which then I hope uh, should receive its focus of attention in public debate. Thank you.